you have to do is put the sugar basin over the piccalilli stains and your sponsor new husband will never know that he married a slut. How long? Me or supper? Supper. Oh, the tragedies that can happen in a few weeks. I never learned to make love on an empty stomach. Well, we dirty that out and I'll stick it in the machine tomorrow. I'm uh, economising on woman power. Alan, why don't you like real barb? Because my grandfather used to grow it by the ton. <laughs> No, seriously, I didn't know what a banana was till I was 25 years of age. What's all this about economising on woman power? Oh, I'm keeping myself all fresh and lovely to explode on the word of commas tomorrow. I've got a job. Congratulations. Well, go on, say doing what? Doing what? Knocking on doors, flogging guns. Flogging what? I'll lay out the sample and get the stuff, and after that I'm on commission. It's quite simple, really. All I've got to do is to convince wrinkled old hags like me that they can turn into glorious young sex parts... Like me. ...overnight, if they're using enough oil of artichoke. Ah, oh, come on, Chuck. Even if you don't want a glitter-gloss lipstick or a tube of nude body maker, at least you might pretend to be enthusiastic. I'm very glad for you, love. It's going to be murder on your feet, you know. Ah, well, ever since the letters were first invented, man have taken punishment. What does it matter anyway? There's one thing I'm good at, it's selling. I'll make a bomb. I hope so. Oh, I will, because I damn well intend to. Well, at least one of us has got a job. Alan? The Billy Walker job down at the garage? It isn't. Go on. That's all, I just quit. Oh, Raymond, come on, the Sally Army. Why not a nice educational trip down a coal mine? Tour of the gasworks? It's only a folkney bus ride to the abattoir. A quick slink round the slaughterhouse and I'm anybody's. A five-minute giggle, then we'll come out. Wearing bonnets and clinking tambourines. <laughs> hey, it's not exactly his scene, is it? Who's that? Best date. Aha, she's got no date. She's having you on. You cheeky beggar. I don't suppose you think nobody'd ask me? Well, of course they would, if you had that eye with an half Nelson at the time. Shut up. Well, what for? Bet knows I think she's a very lovely girl, don't you, Petal? Well, Frank didn't need no persuading to go out. If anybody did, it were me. What Frank's this, then? Bradley. That evil git! Oh, bet love, come on. Oh, bet love, come on what? He's bent as a rusty hairpin, him and Judd the dud. Leave He's finished with Judd, done with him. Yeah, and got you for his moll instead. Bonnie and flaming Clyde. Tell me, sweetheart, which old lady will you be coshing first? So, you had a row. Well, you're both a pair of prickly characters. Surely you could have sorted it out one way or another between you. I just don't care to be treated like a snotty nosed oh, apprentice. Alan, I'm sure he didn't. All right, he didn't, and that's that, isn't it? What did he say? Please. It's not important now. But if you don't tell me, how do I know which side to choose? Which side? You mean you have to choose? Oh, I see. My husband, right or wrong? Well, something like that, yes. People call it loyalty, you know. Oh, and don't be so plain inductive. If I am in a state, would you stand there and watch me? I didn't make a mistake. I made a decision. Yes, a decision. In the middle of a row, in the middle of a flaming temper, a decision to walk out on a good job, a job you like, and what's more, a job that you flaming well need. Counsel for the prosecution expertly summing up the case. Oh, Alan, love, please don't let's make a muck of it. We can't afford to make a muck of it. Not now we can't. You mean we can't afford little luxuries like pride and dignity? I didn't or say... Or at least I can't. I didn't say that, Alan. Don't twist it. Where are you going? I'm going to the Rovers. To see Billy? Oh, you'll sort it out one way or another. I won't be late. What does she want to go get me? Well, don't just stand there. Come on in. We've locked up the spoons. Ray. So long as you're not locked up all the women. What are you drinking, Frank? What or what? Pale ale or pale ale. I'll have one of each. How are you doing, Titch? Hey, clock him if you want. I don't mind. I like being called Titch, really. Makes me feel little and feminine and helpless. About as helpless as a flaming boa constrictor. How's Juddy boy? Rotten in hell, I hope. I've told you, he's finished with him. Yes. True. I'm not going to say satisfied. Because, frankly, I couldn't give a monkey's whether you are or not. Oh, this is going to be a smashing evening, this is. I was hoping it would be. It will. Life's too short, isn't it, Ray? You said it, kid. How many pairs of eyelashes have you got on? No. You cheeky beggar than me own. Well, go on, pull. Well? Good glue. 
Uh, we fit then. Where are we going? Raymond's got something organised, haven't you, Raymond? <laughs> oh, that was only a joke. Uh, let's go somewhere and have a quiet drink, eh? No. No, I'm easy. I'll fall in. Go where? Your idea? You tell him, Ray. All I'm saying is the dust housewives see coppers going up on this and coppers going up on that every week. I mean, do they? I suspect they might, but they call it things like cost of living or inflation. They can call it the dance of the dying swan. It still amounts to having to stretch your rotten housekeeping further and further every week. Of course, I think it's all due to the common market myself. Personally. Except we don't happen to belong to the common market, Mother. That is just what I am saying, and things would be a good deal worse if we did. I mean, butter, 18 shillings a pound in Belgium. Or somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Scott. I'd like a half a bitter, please, Mr. And the same for me, we'll make it a big one. Are you winning meat? Just about. Oh. Ah, then, you know, most of them have got wives who should be able to keep them in touch with what's going on if they're out about them. Except Mr. Heath. Right? Well, somewhere there's a very lucky young lady waiting. Thank heavens for that. Hey? Well, now she's turned her matchmaking attentions to Edward Heath. Pat Mark get a bit of rest. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't think she's quite the right type, love. Not for him. Who? Well, you've got to wear big floppy hats and open garden fates. Have you opened many garden fates lately, love? I was just going to ask you, love, if you would be a dear and put Billy Sucker out for me, he must be starving. Oh, don't fuss, mother. I reckon I can just about manage to ladle out a dollar per stew for myself. <laughs> Hey, has that lynch been in here? Not tonight. I'll lynch you when I get my hands on it. I don't mind her having visitors in at the flat, but I do mind her leaving the fag ends and dirty glasses for me. Perhaps she was in a hurry. Oh, I, perhaps I'm in a hurry and I should not well think of that. Are you? Uh, no. Oh, stop flipping moaning and have a double grapefruit juice. I was told that it was representation of the people, by the people and for the people. Hey. Oh, but these days sometimes you get the feeling that it's anything but. What's fetch? Do you knock up on the soapbox all of a sudden? The size of this week's butcher's bill, that's what usually gets us going, not your defence estimates or your balance of payment. She doesn't just read the comic strips. It's the butcher's bill and the gas bill and the price of a pair of kids' wellingtons. They do the policy making, we do the living. Up and there's the difference. <laughs> Have a bit of please, Mrs. Walker. The whole world redeeming, so rich and so free, now flowing for all men, come roll over me. Song number 167. <laughs> out tonight as I'm a working woman tomorrow. Can you spare a cuppa for a fully paid up scrounger then? Yeah, right. I thought it was Alan. I left him in the pub. Oh, so you come round here, eh? That's right, yeah. What's the point in visiting married women's houses if you know the husbands are going to be in? Lovey, stop trying so hard to be a dirty old man. Is the effort beginning to show? It always did, love. What do you fellas do with these cars? You used to stick your Dennis's in the machine. I'd have stuck Dennis in the machine if I could. Alan likes his done by hand. In that case, Val Barlow will have to look to her laurels. I've got news for you, love. I've no intentions of being the mother of twins. Oh, and I've just bought myself a new knitting pattern. What's up with Alan? Nothing. He's, uh, he's had a bust up with Billy. Can you see a little scrubbing brush anywhere? What happened, then? Well, what should happen? Nothing. Go and run to make it up. Have they? Yeah. That's why he's in the pub now. I told him to go round there and see if he could straighten it out. You told him? Yeah, well, I just wanted him to see a bit of sense, that's all. But there's no milk on the topics on the fridge. Elsie, do you know what you do to fellows? Fascinating. 
Here, chew them up and spit the bones out. Well, thanks, and all of you, too. God knows it's got nothing to do with That's me. That's for sure. But somebody ought to tell you, and only it's usually muggings here. Tell me what, then? Well, there is such a thing as expecting too much. Me? Expect too much? <laughs> I've expected now, Tommy Flaming Life, and that's exactly what I've got. Bill Gregory, Steve, Alan. All big, lovely guys, great big, strong, shiny, bright fellas. All right, so I've got taste. Who do you expect me to choose? The unchback of not a flaming what's They it? are fellas, love. People, not plaster flipping saints. Yeah, well, I learnt that before I crawled out of my cradle. No, you didn't. You're the original little girl who believed, always believed there was a big knight in shining armour coming along on a big white horse. One Show of me days. a woman who doesn't. Most of them give up after the third heartbreak and settle for what there is, but not you. Me? Not settle. That's a laugh. I've settled for more hard knocks these last few weeks than you know, believe me. And so has Alan. I mean, it's not bad enough he's had to come crashing down from that big pedestal you put him on. But you've got to make it worse for him by making him go Captain Anne to Billy for his Captain job. Captain Anne, don't exaggerate. And how far does Flaming Torrens go until you're begging in the street for a crust? The point is, man wants to be loved. Warts and all. Oh. But let him be a man. Don't go moving in and taking over when the cracks begin to show. Me take over? Why would I take over? Because Alan's down. Because you're strong. Well, if I am, it's only because I've flamed enough to be. Stronger than him and me put together. You don't have to be, love. Not that way. Us fellas, love, we're like kids. I mean, we, we know we're daft and we're weak. Well, the point is, we don't like you knowing it at all. It's what's known as masculine pride, and we're stuck with it. Glenn, I wouldn't hurt Alan. Never in a million years. I love him. I know you do, love. And that's why it's you that can hurt him, poor devil. Poor devil? Yeah. He married you. Sugar. <laughs> I'm stood there, on hard shoulder, looking at me mate like, Skinner. Only, he's dead, isn't he? And his bike's all busted. A good bike it were, not rubbish. Any road, I'm stood there, sort of waiting for ambulance and fuzz and that. But, it will be me, Skinner. It's all it's right, it. John. It is. I don't know. Nothing. Not really. Somehow I got home. Well, me digs, you know. And that's when it sort of hit me. About me mum and dad. Well, they copped it in a road accident and all. Though so I were only a kid at the time. Ten, I were. But, well, I got to thinking. And what did you think, John? How people are there one minute and next they're gone. Bingo, like that. And if you've not done nothing for them while they're there, well, there's not much flaming point, is there? I mean, not when it's too late. What I mean is, there's no sense just going on day to day without, well, without having some sort of reason. I've never seen it like that before till. There's got to be a reason, and there. God is the reason, John. Love is the reason. 
and God is love. Yeah, well, that's why I come, isn't it? That's why I'm stood up here now. To say that. About, you know, God. Thank you, John. Thank you. I was ten when my mum died. Anyone else? Will anyone else give witness to God's love? Well? It's beginning to rain outside. You see Billy? Yes, he was there. So, what happened? Nothing. You mean he didn't give you your job back? He must be crackers. He needs you. He knows you're a damn good mechanic. I've no idea whether he'd give me my job back or not. You never asked him? No. But you said when you were going out of here that you... No, were... Elsie, I didn't. You did. I see. You can indulge in your little tantrums, but it's always at my expense. Where are you going? Anywhere. No. Out. No, don't. Please. Well, stop leaning on me, will you? Just leave me something. I, I only did it for the best. I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. The right thing. Well, it doesn't always happen to be the thing you want, Elsie, unfortunately. Len says I'm... I'm as tough as whole boots. Did you know? He said that? Not exactly. He said I was strong. Same thing. He's right, isn't he? No, he isn't. If you think that, you don't know me. Neither of you do. Oh, come on, Elsie. Whenever the crunch comes, you make the decisions, don't you? Only because I had to. I never had anybody to do it for me before. Not before now. It's no different now. It is. It is. All I... All I wanted... All I ever wanted was... was to be loved. I just wanted someone to look after me. To protect me. What's that old-fashioned word? Cherish me. What any woman wants. When some man comes along to put his arms around you, what do you say? Stand back. I'm independent. I make my own decisions and yours too if I get the chance. Do I do that? I think so. What's wrong with me? It's just a very large ego, love, that's all. Oh my God, we are being honest tonight, aren't we? I've got the same complaints, you know. That's probably why we fell for each other, I don't know. And why we fight. We'll always fight. I don't want to, Ellen. Well, nobody wants to, but we will. We take on the whole world, people like you and I. They can loathe us, they can love us, as long as they know that we're there. I went into that pub tonight. It took any walk of five minutes to get around to serving me. Bitch! No, it's not that. It's just everybody has a different way of the revenge. Revenge? Revenge for what? For being a success. You should know all about that. No, I don't think I do. I've never known what it's like to be a success. Not in a way that it mattered. Not a way that I wanted to be. I could have been something, Alan. When I was a kid, I used to stand in the middle of our backyard. Right in the middle of that midden with all the washing flapping around me and the kids screaming. And he used to say to myself, Elsie, kid, one day you'll be something. Just another broken promise and a lifetime of broken promises. Well, the last of them was mine. You mean the money? The big house? No, that's not what I meant. I'm, I'm glad in a way we never got that house. The one with the stone bar and the utility room. It would have just meant keeping up the old rotten act. What act? Oh, the posh one, the air dues, the clothes. That Elsie Tanner was the phoniest one of the lot. Underneath there was a great big nothing. A woman who'd made a muck of every single thing she did in her life. But you know how it is with this big use. You've got to put on the front. Wear a mask. And you wear it for so long that 
When you come to take it off, you don't know where the mass ends and... and you begin. You know something, Alan Howard? I think you fell in love with a woman you never even knew. I knew her, Elsie. I knew her. No. She got lost a long time ago. When she met a fella called Steve Tanner. And thought she could go back to the days when you were young. This is a dream we all have. Is it? Some of us know it's a dream, that's all. Where's the truth, then? The glamorous Alan Howard, the glamorous Elsie Tanner. What are we, Alan? We're middle-aged. We're ordinary and we're fallible. I've got a lousy temper and you don't know how to iron shirts properly. <laughs> no money. You've got one job between us. How many jars of vanishing cream do I have to sell to keep you in scalping? <coughs> You know what I do to fellas, Alan? I chew them up and spit them up. You can chew me up any time. You say I'm strong. I don't know. I don't know. I only know. I'm frightened and lonely and scared as hell. I don't know. But but we all are, Elsie. We all are. I need you. Gears over there. Your kit. That's what you came for, isn't it? Well, not altogether, no. No? Well, what then? You want back? Forget it. Oh, come on, you tell me. If you, if you want to come back, you tell me. Look, there are other garages, you know. There are other jobs. There are other mechanics. All right, then we're wasting each other's time, aren't we? Good, Strenny. Swallowing that bloody great thing we call pride. Well, I wasn't aware that I was. Oh, I shouldn't be necessary any road. Not between a couple of grown fellas like us. Well, it was a bit of a damn fool argument, wasn't it? Look, I'm in this racket for lolly. And if there's one thing I've learned in this life, it's that doing favours for people don't swell the profits. Ken Barlow was a friend. Friends don't swell the profits either. Only customers. So in working hours, we don't have friends, we have customers, right? It's a fine established business philosophy. So what the hell got up your nose? You did. Look, I warned you, I'm not used to taking orders. I'm not used to giving them. I'll tell you what, mate. I reckon we've both got a lot to learn. You're evil, you. We said we'd meet them at Jackson's. So, they'll go ahead when we don't turn up. It was supposed to be a foursome. You're not getting worried, are you? What about? Well, I'm not the mad monster of Planet X, you know. In spite of Ray's advanced publicity. I didn't think you were, love. Or else I'd not have gone out with you in the first place. We didn't, did we? What? Go out. 
Wasn't much of a date. I didn't mind. It was a giggle. I wanted to talk to you. Well, we're talking now. Yeah. More tea? There's any in the pot. Bet? Yeah? You'll come out again with me sometime, won't you? Somewhere proper like. I don't know, love. Why not? I just don't think it's such a good idea. You don't reckon much to me, do you? You're a flaming touchy beggar, you, aren't you? Then you'll come out again sometime. All right, if it makes you happy. Great. How many sugars was it? Three. You'll get worms. <laughs>